Hey everybody, very first RV from a brand new company, and you get to see it here first. Stick around, let me know what you think. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV down here, getting to see the very first Brinkley RV that has ever been made. Uh, we've literally rolled out the red carpet for you today. So this is a company that I, I think you're really going to like the story. This is a, a company that's been founded by some industry moguls who know RVing because they go RVing. And that is the big Brinkley advantage. That's the big difference behind these. And it's not just the same, same thing that I've seen a hundred times. There's certainly some familiar features here. There's some things that you don't need to change but they're, they're, they're pushing forward, they're pushing the envelope, and they may be uh, kind of changing the face of the RV industry. So uh, the RV here, the, the idea behind this is something that is mid-sized with full profile luxury fifth wheel features. We've got stackable washer dryer. We have the largest solar I've ever seen standard in this class at 370 watts, huge charge controller, the ability to very easily install an inverter to this that would run every outlet in the RV. Uh, super hot cold camp rated and how about the fact you don't even need to crawl around on your hands and your knees to empty your sewer tanks it's all electronic you can literally push a button uh, so if you got bad knees you got a bad shoulder anything like that you don't have to go crawling around in the dirt where God knows what taco Tuesday disaster spilled on the ground before you got there huge focus on running gear 17 and a half H rated tires on this like a giant fifth wheel toy hauler with like an 18,000 pound GVW. The idea here is uh, peace of mind, reliability. They're doing things on the roof that require virtually no maintenance. Uh, it is an RV designed if you want to find your last RV you've, you, you ever want to own, the last thing you ever want to consider buying. This is a brand you really need to be putting on your radar. And if this is where they're hitting at the ground level, I can't even imagine where they're going. Uh, I, th since this is the very first one, this is actually prototype number two. I, I wanna ask you folks, please share any and all feedback, good, bad, ugly, everything in between. I will do my best to kind of share the same with you and let me know what you think about this and let's get inside. So as I mentioned, I got the good fortune to see the original prototype. Um, and uh, I'm already impressed with the, the little touches and improvements and just, um, you know, quality of life features that they've already enhanced and added into this RV. Now, the original prototype version 1.0, it was actually, uh, you know, real world cross country, literally from like, uh, you know, the, the Midwest here to California tested by... Basically one of the, you know, uh, original Brinkley founders, partners, uh, brand designer. And the thing that kind of struck me about that is the people who are running this company, the people who are designing these RVs are actual RVers themselves. And I think that's one of the reasons you're seeing so many good quality of life enhancements here because the people that actually use RVs are designing these RVs. And we're seeing, you know, a lot of like, high level what you'd often refer to as luxury fifth wheel features wrapped up down here in um, a you know mid profile fifth wheel. Now mid pros are certainly getting swankier than they ever used to be, but I don't see a lot of touches like this done even in a lot of high profile, bigger, higher dollar, heavier fifth wheels. That's the thing that kind of impresses me about this. So enough of all that, what kind of stuff am I talking about here? Um, first of all, let's note the fact that they're using, um, you know, like, Floor flush slides where the main floor matches the slide floor. That is always my nerd preferred way of doing things right there. Um, when we get to the kitchen, notice that they've done the same thing there in the kitchen. Now they've gone with a little bit of what I call the Franken table, where it's like kind of a booth, kind of a couple's freestanding table and chairs. But as you're going to see, that offers a lot of additional features uh, when we start breaking things down and diving a little deeper like Jacques Cousteau. Also notice how they went with a little bit um, atypical chairs over here. If you are a little bit larger American sized person, you're actually going to be able to fit in those. Now, speaking of fitting in, look at the slide height on this. I could actually stand in that slide without knocking my noggin, which I thought was great. Now also notice that they included storage over here uh, above the seating area, an area that a lot of manufacturers have since uh, you know stopped doing handy little features like that. Now that little black bucket that you're seeing there in the theater seat, that is actually a wireless phone charge pad, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the uh, you know ability just to keep your devices always powered up. Now look at those side stands. I like the kind of you know 
the open air visual in the bottom, but there's still storage on top, as you're going to see. Another thing that I really, really liked about all of this is the way they did their cabinetry. They are not using the same cheap little uh, clips to hold all of the, uh, the doors open, uh, your overhead doors, like those doors that swing open. Everything is residential soft close and magnetic instead of those dumb little clips. Um, cause sometimes all it takes is a worker moving a little bit too fast to accidentally put one of those clips where they don't really belong. And then the door like is, it hangs stupidly crooked. It looks goof stupid. They have basically just eliminated that opportunity here, that opportunity for failure. Now you may notice also no heat vents in the floor. That is all going to be cabinet side ducted, like below that Island right there. Notice all the cool indirect lighting. There's also a lot of dimmer lighting used in this RV. And the base of that island is actually all steel. Uh, nice big oven over here with that uh, like more residential looking feeling cooktop. And that's the thing. A lot of this brings uh, a great deal of residential, almost like full timing flair into a segment that isn't known for that. Now that is like a, uh, a big 12 volt DC compressor fridge over there. So it's totally travel safe. It's faster cooling. It'll be able to handle those hotter climates. And with their standard 370 watt solar package, they're going to be able to offset that. Now they actually did have a Keurig machine over here uh, on display. It fits on this little shelf just fine, but I wanted you to get to see the extra little details they're doing. Over here, you've got the, the outlets to power your devices and they're down low where you can reach them, but you've got USB and USB type C plugs being integrated into this RV. There's all these extra little detail features that they're crushing. Oh, speaking of which, I'm, I about did a backflip when I saw this. Now I heard from Keystone Cougar that uh, they were getting it done, but this is the first I've ever seen a factory installed shade that pulls from the bottom up. So if somebody's knocking on the door, they can't see you. But if you want some light, if you want some uh, to, to peek at who's at the door, you can do that all from right here. That is so cool. And look at how big that is. Also, you've got the little uh, lippard um, screen uh, shot here, basically the, the bar to be able to pull the screen door shut without, you know, ripping this off on accident. Plus, it's very pet friendly design. There's more pet friendly features that we haven't seen yet. But the little dog wants to scratch on the door to go outside thing. Bam, nailed it. Um, notice again, the household outlets down there in the bottom of the slide, uh, they do, that box kind of sticks in a little bit, but it's out of the way. I don't foresee that to really be too much of an issue. I do like the minimalism of the light, uh, above the slide right there. But what I want to draw your attention to is the windows. Take a look at this. So they've got a pull down, uh, you know, blackout shade with a pull up daytime shade. And if you open those windows, the daytime shade is actually going to act like your bug screen. Very similar to like European style windows. Now the thing is, these are frameless windows, but they're using a different kind of frameless window. Most frameless windows, um, they just get terrible airflow. Uh, if you try to open the window, the only kind of breeze you're gonna feel is jack and squat. These open nine inches. They open a long way, so you can actually get big time airflow in there. And again, those uh, soft close magnetic overhead cabinet doors. Notice the side stands had to flip up storage chests very kind of residential feeling like, you know, three cushion back uh, sofa here. I think three adults could probably fit on that pretty well. Um, and then of course you've got your electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster uh, right below the uh, power televator right there. But the kitchen in this is fantastic. The, the storage is terrific for something this size. They really nail this kitchen. Like you've got that good symmetry kind of kitchen where you have counter space and cabinets on both sides of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, oven. And if you notice the, um, the wall panel next to the refrigerator, to the right of the stovetop, that actually has, um, uh, some outlets over there for appliances. Plus there's appliance plugs on the, uh, you know, the, the Island faces and the Island sides, but all the little details, like again, that, the, the little doggy dish that's totally hidden away under the countertop. Like if you're like, I don't care. I don't, I don't, camp with a dog. I don't care about dog friendly features. You're not losing anything. It's just out of the way. It's just there if you want it and gone if you don't. Now, um, a couple other things as I'm sitting here, something else uh, I, I kind of realized the, um, if I uh, pivot you straight up, we look straight up here. 
They've got an extra speaker built into the roof. The sound system in this is fantastic, but I don't use the kind of camera and sound equipment that really picks that up very, very nicely. One of the other really cool things about it though, you can just Bluetooth to the entire RV with your phone. Um, and uh, you know, basically, it, it, well, I mean, a lot of stereos have a Bluetooth function, but you're literally just Bluetoothing to this RV's like Sonos system. It's a residential entertainment system in this. Um, <laughs> I'm just sitting here, I'm just looking around, and even just from the guest seat back here, this has such a beautiful, grand feel. Uh, I, take a second here, folks, if you don't mind, pause the video, write a little comment, what do you think so far, what do you like, what do you dislike, what kind of questions do you have, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to keep rolling right upstairs. Oh, no, I'm sorry, by the way, one thing in that big, giant pantry, you saw all those shelves? Those are residential grade and they are adjustable. So you can have as much or as little shelf space in there as you really desire. Plus moving our way upstairs here. All, did, have you noticed, uh, uh, like, are you seeing a lot of bells and, and whistles and buttons and switches? It's because they have all of that nicely tucked away here. Now, one of the things you can do, if you're going to be gone for a while, leave this door open so that when you open the main entry door, the motion sensor on this panel will light up and it will let you see where you are in the RV and turn off whatever lights you want to. And I mean, look at this, man. They are like, they're making sure you can turn on anything and everything you want from here. And of course, you could manipulate all of that off your phone as well. By the way, your little solar battery tender is in here as well, your, your monitor, so you can see uh, how much juice is coming in. Now, um, working our way upstairs uh, past those like floating stair steps, the, the bathroom, uh, a, a lot of RV manufacturers, they will come out swinging and they'll give you just like really upscale looks and feels in the living room. And then when you get to the bedroom and the bathroom, they really scale down because they say, well, a lot of people, they only buy the living room and then they just sort of deal with everything else. Every room, inside, outside, upside down in this, it is all super, super detailed. Even here in the bathroom, we're getting that same solid surface countertop stuff that we saw um, inside the RV. Now, uh, you have a locking, sliding pocket privacy door, a true pocket door in the wall right there. And if you couldn't tell by my face, I was very happy with the uh, fluffy, friendly toilet space around this. Also, just the way that they have gussied up that wall behind it like a couple towel hooks but like just even the vertical beams just something to kind of break up the monotony and of course you have that nice big tall closet space in there but speaking of tall the headroom in this upper deck is fantastic i think it's about six and a half feet i have zero issues at over six foot tall myself standing in that shower and notice how they have that indirect like lightsaber uh ahsoka tano style lightsaber lighting above the shower wall right there, like right at the trim point. That way, uh, you know, cause like I'm inside right now, or if you're taking a shower at night, a lot of showers don't have good lighting. Like when you're shopping for an RV, one of the things you don't realize is that, um, you know, you don't have good lighting in a lot of bathroom shower areas because you know, it's daytime usually when you're shopping. Well, you know, that doesn't happen always when you're camping. But look at this, when I first looked at this, I was like, oh man, really? You only did the mirror mirror on the wall, but what I didn't realize is uh, there's a little bit of hidden Lipitorge storage galorge going on behind that. Like I said, every little nook and cranny is all well executed. And you know, sometimes the detail work showing a, uh, like a, a really good build and fit and finish, it's in the things that you can't see. For instance, do you see any crown molding where the wall meets the ceiling behind me up here? And you won't because they make sure that the walls and the ceilings actually line up and they're not using trim to hide imperfect uh, workmanship. I couldn't decide if I want to say imperfect or imperfections. So what came out was imperfect. Whatever. What? <laughs> Let's move on. Now, one of the other things I want to kind of showcase, I'm going to do it right here in real time. We step upstairs, I walk right into this bedroom. You see the upper deck ceiling height? Did you see me duck through the bedroom door? This is made for American sized people. Now, moving up into the bedroom here, you already saw the headroom. What's also great, if you press and hold the light switch up here, those can dim down. So if you want a little kind of nighttime mood lighting, uh, you know, uh, some, some households have the system where the uh, gentleman of the house will turn down the lights and he gives her that uh, special look and um, she says, uh, 
No, get away, get away from me. <laughs> well, this has that system. Now, you notice you've got the 4K smart TVs. Those are standard. And this one in the bedroom, also standard. And that aggressive, like, downward dog angle right there. Now, by the way, in case you're wondering, they are they have, like, spotlights set up outside, which is why we're getting some uh, unusual lighting in here. Now, I think I know the answer to this, but leave me a comment anyway. These are 50 amp standard, 15,000 BTU standard. Uh, optional second air uh, able to be installed here in the bedroom. Would you like that factory installed? Again, I probably know the answer, but let me know. We have a choice between a king and a queen bed, and they're not using a Schwintech bed slide system. It's a power gear system like a motorhome, and what that allows them to do is free up more floor space with a deeper bed slide and bigger bedside windows. Now, speaking of bedside, you've got a very cool little book nook on the, uh, the, the one side of the bed over here, uh, but... If you lift the bed up, you can see there's full storage. But around the corner, if you whip your legs off the edge of the bed at night, there is a motion light that you can activate on either side of the bed. And what's really cool about that is it will help you, like, if you get up and down at night, it'll let you see your way to the bathroom without necessarily disturbing anybody else or, you know, uh, you know, blinding yourself by the light like Manfred Mann and, and Bruce Springsteen. Uh, w which one was your preference, by the way? I, I find little qualities. I enjoy both of them. But did you notice a very cool quality, very rare in a mid-profile fifth wheel? That washer-dryer prep up front is designed for a stackable washer-dryer not a combo-matic, not a side-by-side, -side. so you really maintain some excellent uh, closet space. Now, did you notice there is storage in the top of that um, dresser, but it slid open, so that if you do have stuff on top of the dresser, you don't have to take everything off the dresser just to get to your watch or your you know money clip or whatever you have there. Again, it's the details that you get in this only from someone who actually goes camping. And as always, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna kind of lock down their display unit here, and uh, I'm showing it in road mode. I don't care. I'm going to go all the way and do everything I can for you here every time. And if you've uh, enjoyed the extra footage that we're getting here for you, you know, breaking away from the dealership to get you advanced footage on an RV that's like not even publicly available yet, hit that subscribe button, like our video, and again, please, all the feedback you can leave along the way. Uh, let's let's relay that to these folks now. Like a lot of triple slide fifth wheels, bedroom, bathroom access, not a problem. But they uh, they understand RVing. Again, uh, one of the founders, partners, uh, the, the primary people behind this company, Active RVer, has actually used the, own, the, the Brinkley RV that he built, basically, to go across the country. And having access to the full refrigerator, whether it's for service or travel stops, they understand it. They understand RVing because they go RVing, and that is the Brinkley advantage. First of all, I think the slow scroll is the most appropriate thing for this nose. This, it sets the tone right from the front. That just gorgeous, high-class, executive kind of look. Now, those are almost like, uh, I call them the Ahsoka Tano, uh, you know, lightsaber glow beam accent lights in that nose. Not the individual little dot, dot, dot LEDs. You know, it's just extra classy little features and details like that. Um, this is also an easy thing to miss if you don't know what you're looking for. The fact that they're using wide stance auto leveling down here so that you do get a, a, a better, more stable experience when you get to your campsite. That way you don't end up with that motion sick herky jerky wiggle jiggle that just kind of, it just puts a little bit of a, uh, a damper on the experience, you know. Now there's all kinds of crazy wacky lighting going on the outside of this because I'm actually getting first early access into their display even before all the, the fancy pants muckety muck, uh, you know, RV news companies get down here. They invited old Uncle Josh down to say hi and take a look at this. And first of all, I just want to back up. I want to put the whole broad side of this thing into view because it is so geometric and angular and sharp and modern. That is the definition of Smexy right there. There's no Nike Adidas swooshes slathered all over this thing. Big awning spaces on this too. They put straight maximized awnings here. But one of the things that I want to focus on is uh, something that is a little different. Again, I kind of talked about it inside a touch, but those windows, they are frameless, but notice how they're squared up frameless. The interesting thing about those is again, it allows for that cool shade system that we saw inside, that almost European style shade system, but also the fact they open for excellent airflow. And you see the extended folding handle right here. You know what's really cool about this? You know the traditional folding handle that literally every manufacturer uses? You know the problem with those? They, uh, some, some punk kid walking around unattended 
uh, at, at the campsite. The, uh, the, the, the favorite phrase I have for those is crotch goblins, but <laughs> some unattended child can walk around and flip the door handle over your entry door. And frankly, sometimes you're pretty much hosed. There's, there's no way you can get out without busting your handle. Well, first of all, that folding handle can't do it, and it gives you more to grab onto as you're coming up and down. And you know who kind of keeps coming to mind when I think of this RV? It's actually my parents. My dad's had a hip replacement. My mom's had a knee replacement. She had to have a touch-up done on that because it wasn't done the first time. They are becoming, you know, limited in their mobility. Now, they're still pretty good, and they would still prefer a fifth wheel, but this is something like, you know, with, with the different things going on the roof that we're going to talk about, this is something where they could uh, spend more time using it, less time trying to take care of it, less time worrying about getting it taken care of, and just go RVing, just have fun. That's the point of the entire exercise, after all, you know? Now, down here, this is massive. They've got uh, Cooper 17 and a half inch H-rated tires. Again, like a big, giant luxury fifth wheel, big, massive toy hauler. You've got the Moride CRE 3000 suspension system with the wet bolt fasteners, the bronze bushings. All If, if you want to just park this thing somewhere, fine, do that. You want to tow and go with it. You want to put massive miles on this thing, it's made for it. It laughs and says, bring it on, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your name's Ted or Frank or Alice, I don't know. Anyway, now um, your uh, body construction, your walls are um, Asdell layered on the outside here. Uh, the floor is um, aluminum uh, structured, so aluminum uh, um, joists, you know, running longitudinally down the trailer. But you also have a 5 8 thick seamless floor decking on the inside. And back here, you have one of my favorite things the junk in the trunk storage system basically this is a big storage trunk that goes up under the sofa so it's just bonus storage let me see if i can shed some light on the uh, situation here we've got the technology called an iphone in my pocket now they're displaying this currently with a little slide out more ride tray um i think the idea behind this is to by default have it just be uh wide open storage so if you got your zero gravity chairs uh, anything like that, you've got the perfect place to put those in there. Notice they're doing slam latches, not just on the, the big doors where you're looking, but they're just doing them everywhere. And uh, they're, they're magnet holdbacks. You didn't see them before, did you? Because they're like just simpler, cleaner, less visible. Factory standard towing package. You want to put up to 3,000 pounds of towing back here. There is also a, uh, a four-way wiring harness that... Again, with the cool showcase showdown lighting that we got going on, not exactly easy to see, but hey, we got a flashlight, we got the technology, that's all it takes. Notice this, I call it the double mint taillight system because you got double the fun going on here. You've also got double the safety uh, in case one of the uh, lights or elements tends to foul out on you. You got a, uh, you know, better place to go with that sort of thing. And as we look up top here, you see backup camera available on these and let's get you up to that rooftop. Now, I feel a little bit like a soprano singer up here, literally up in the rafters, but I, I couldn't do this without getting you up here. First of all, again, they're just using the larger uh, like kitchen vent fan with the rain sensor on it, but you see the little ears that stick up. If you wanted to add one of those roof vent covers, you could do that too. You don't have to like screw in anything and mess up your warranty. Also, uh, I think this is the new class leader with 370 watts of factory solar. And uh, we already kind of saw the charge controller up front. They're pumping some serious juice. You're turning a lot of uh, sunshine into lightning. Now, down the line, you are going to see Brinkley push the envelope on their roof ceiling. And one of the first things that they are doing different, like you look at this, and you, you're like, okay, what are you talking about? That is the exact same self-leveling stuff that everybody and their brother has always used. But it's not. It does self-level, but this is a different type of thing that has a lifetime warranty requiring no specific maintenance. Now, I would still recommend getting up here and cleaning your roof periodically, you know, checking for weather damage because mother nature does like to throw sticks the way my uncle Gary likes to throw stones in glass houses, but you get the idea. The fact is there is no specific maintenance required up here. The idea behind this, more fun, less worry. Getting down from the roof here, uh, uh, let's uh, get you up front. I want to show you some of the other great stuff they're doing. Now, one of the first questions I had, it was really funny. Remember that guy I told you? He, uh, he helped found the company, designs these things. He's an original partner for the company. I go, hey, in the front compartment, he goes, yes, you can put a generator in there. We thought of that. I didn't even have the question out of my mouth, and they were all over it. 
Um, it'll come with a box for a big double battery system if you wanted to. Now, obviously, there's plenty of room if you want to go just crazy adding batteries here, you could. But factory standard 50 amp MPPT charge controller. They're starting off with great hardware. They're all prepped and ready for a factory TPMS, which you see there. Now you're seeing a handful of battery disconnects. You've got to disconnect one specifically for the batteries, but a second one specifically for the solar package so you're not murdering your charge controller. And this little stuff up here, that is where if you wanted to install an inverter, you basically just splice in right there and you have whole house inversion. Now one of the major details I really want to showcase for you right here is I talked about it inside. But that bed slide, first of all, look how freaking deep that is. That is, uh, <laughs> that's deeper than going undercover with the FBI as a double triple agent, I tell you right there, folks. But notice it's not a Schwintech slide. They, their very first generation one prototype had a Schwintech slide. And it was one of the reasons they said, we don't want you to record us with a Schwintech slide. We want people to see that we're doing something a little different. They're using a motorhome power gear slide system something that's made to handle bigger, heavier weight with an excellent track record of reliability. And this right here is brilliant. What they've done with their docking center by making one door flip open with magnet holdbacks on both doors and the other one up, you never have to duck under anything. Tankless on-demand water heater so nobody has to take them chilly willy showers that nobody really enjoys, of course. But this right here, their heat ducting they use in the RV, it's not the same little cheap silvery foil thing that everybody uses. I don't know how else to describe this other than it feels like they took a spring and wrapped it in duct tape, but you're going to have to just literally stab this thing with a pair of scissors like Jack the Ripper to try to get it to fail. It is super crush resistant. Then again, I got chicken arms. I'm not exactly strong, but the fact is this stuff can take a licking and keep on ticking right there. Notice the all aluminum structure, zero carpeting here in the past through. So, you know, no moldy oldie action. And again, uh, the, the docking center. There's just even this. Even this is awesome. Look at this. It comes with a built-in water hose on its own little retractable cable. So if you don't want to, uh, like if, if your, your park water hookup is right next to this area, you don't even need to, to lug out a water hose. It's built in. And we have the electric gate valves. You don't have to crawl around. You don't have to get on your hands and knees. You can push this. And this is a true 90 gallon holding tank capacity. That's another thing I haven't even talked about yet. This has massive holding tank capacities and it has a single sewer outlet, but the dual 45 gallon tanks, they actually did cross pump over. But notice you've got the indirect lighting down here. So if you are trying to hook up and empty at night, you can actually see what you're doing. You got the stinky slinky sewer holder standard from the factory so you don't have to get pink eye by mixing your black tank stuff with your party stuff. It's just, they've done everything I've ever seen anyone else do. And then they've uh, <laughs> they, they cranked it up to 11. And still we're not done here. So there's motion activated uh, uh, light sensors here on both sides of this pass through with another one of those big giant light beams so that you can see what you're doing and you don't have to worry about shifting cargo blocking the lights that you might have in the pass through. And for serviceability, they've given you easy access panels to get to anything and everything you might possibly need down here. And once again, did you see those magnetic holdbacks uh, previously on that big baggage door? They're there. When you see them in person, they're imperceptible. They match the sidewall. I don't know. Maybe about the size of a nickel. They're just doing it different. So once again, very first time we've seen one of these. Let me know what you think. Good, bad, ugly, otherwise. What do you think about the windows, the different flooring, the decor? Anything you're willing to share, uh, I'm willing to hear. And if we see consistent feedback, we'll get it sent to them. And who knows? Maybe we can make version three even better. Until next time, everybody, again, if you appreciate how we got you here, we got this exclusive footage. Actually, give Brinkley a hand. Tell Brinkley thank you for uh, allowing us this early access. There's a whole crowd of people here that you're not seeing that are waiting to jump all over this thing to do some final touch-ups and whatnot. They paused everything they're doing so that we could bring you this footage here today. So, you know, tell them thank you if nothing else. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.